Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, we're going to cup the first two experimental roasts that I did with the new setup of the roaster in the garage, vented out through the wall and everything. Oh, thank you, my father-in-law. Um, we're going to cup uh, Vietnam and we're going to kind of cup Brazil. I'll have you take a look at these so you can kind of see the difference. If you can. Anyway, the Vietnam is just so pretty, so plump, you know, whenever I roast this. And I always roast like, I'll get into the roast profiles and everything, but um, so, so pretty. Um, and then I have Brazil in here. The Brazil has been particularly, not tough. Uh, yeah, it's kind of tough, but hard to read and has not been be behaving consistently. And it's probably because my roast process has not been consistent but the reason why I want to cup these I've already cupped them um, I've already established my uh, taste notes on there but I had a little bit of issue like I said in my last vlog with this new setup and I followed all the specs and everything I'll show you a diagram of what I followed and maybe some of you can point out to me what I can do I kind of already know what I want to do but we'll get to that um, but anyway I want to cup these to see if there's any defects because of the issues that I had during roasting. So let's get started. I've been seeing more and more people do pour over and stuff. And then um, what I would think like being so something like an established coffee company, I'll see them pour over and do that whole bypass thing where they clean off the edges of the filter. And I'm like, doesn't that make you cringe a little bit when you watch that? And I'm like, oh God, I'm one of those. <laughs> okay, four minutes to brew. Um, yeah, so my major concern uh, was a little bit of what I didn't tell you guys. There's a fly in here. Okay, so to start at the beginning with the new roaster setup, right? It's always been my dream <laughs> after I figured out, oh my gosh, it is so annoying to be able to push and pull the machine back and forth from the garage because I needed to vent, right? And a big issue here, and that might, might not seem like a big deal, but the issue with our garage is, for one, it's kind of like exposed to everyone. It's not like a typical garage that you can kind of like hide away. I'm, I'm exposed to everyone. Anybody could see me, which I really didn't like that. And two, we have these relief cuts in the concrete, and the relief cuts themselves are so deep that the wheels of my work a table that holds the roaster, which is over, I don't know, like over 300 pounds or whatever it is. Um, it jostles the machine so much whenever you roll over these uh, relief cuts. And I would, I would try to do it in a way where it's gentle. You know, I'm not just like banging through and like thundering through. I would try to do it as gentle as possible. But still, it was enough to those minuscule like um, agitations to the piping, to the machine, is just wavering a little bit and things would become off kilter or become sometimes even disconnected. I just hated doing that. And I also had to disconnect and reconnect the propane, the, um, the outlet to the wall, to the converter, to the machine, like everything had to be bottom up, bottom down, redone. And like I always say, if there's anything, any processes that are uh, repetitive, you should create a system and, and make them more streamlined and efficient. And that definitely was not efficient. About 40 seconds left here on the brew. So what we had going on over there was, let's just glue this guy basically, in terms of its position, to the corner of the garage, put a hole in the wall. Um, and we were really kind of reluctant to do that because it's, it's sort of like a big drastic change to the house. And we weren't really sure like, are we gonna stay here? Are we gonna move? We definitely wanna move, but <laughs> it's really not in the cards right now, especially because of the pandemic that kind of rained down on our money, our plans, everything. <coughs> Boom, all right, stop. So we get going and um, thankfully our father-in-law um, you know, he was able to punch a hole in the wall and he was able to vent it through the wall. And we kept it under under uh, 15 feet because they say by their specs, whenever you're venting from the chaff can, um, 20 feet. If you are going to introduce any 90 degree angles, reduce by five feet. Okay, cool. So 
from the chaff can to the termination outside of the wall is less than 15 feet. Cool, good. So I'm thinking, hey, we're not gonna need any uh, extra fan stuff, any extra things to help push uh, the smoke out. And as I was roasting my first roast, which was the Brazil, and I was gonna go low and slow, um, I was still getting around, I think maybe around six minutes, seven minutes, I was getting some feedback smoke coming back up through the cooling tray. Um, and yeah, up through the cooling tray, right. So not any smoke coming from the drum, but I was still kind of freaking out because I was like, I usually don't see this. <laughs> And um, basically I was just like, okay. So I was like, let me turn on the cooling fan. Um, those two green buttons. So I just turned on the cooling fan and that seemed to quell the smoke, right? It sucked it out and I was like, cool. But the longer that I left it, um, it started to kind of blow out my flame, right? It just started to affect my flame. So my flame actually went out and I heard my, um, my little ignition thingy go again. And I was like, oh shoot, so it's blowing out the flame, so it's it's too strong. Um, and I was like, okay, so just turn it off, right? And I, I have the fan going inside the drum, right? The airflow is uh, probably about a medium to high right there um, at that point. Um, and then everything seemed to be okay. I ran over outside really quick to just see like, hey, is it venting correctly? And it was, and I was like, okay, cool, like I think, everything is okay. <laughs> but you know, as I left it and I'm going in the first crack and I'm um, going into the last part of the roast, uh, that was, I think here, if we look here, maybe 12 minute roast. Um, I was just gonna go like full city because I, I didn't wanna like, I was still kind of like freaking out about the whole smoke coming through. I was like, oh shit, did I ruin it, whatever. Um, um, I went through the whole process and that was the Brazil. But yeah, I was thinking, did smoke go into my roast here? Okay, so that's what we're gonna cup right now. Um, sorry, I've been jabbering along because I know it's gonna be hot right after, okay? So here we go. Okay, cool. Absolutely no smoke. And <laughs> I think I did a good job on this Brazil. I've been struggling with this Brazil. Um, it's a natural, it's a uh, pretty low elevation. What is it like? Oh, I forget the elevation. I have to look that up. Um, but I'm getting a lot of like um, fruity cocoa-y notes. <laughs> mm. Wow, this is the best it's ever tasted from my, from my own hand. I let it air out, or not really air, air, because I've got like a loose cap um, on this roast sitting over there uh, for a good, eh, not 24 hours, but I let it air out, you know. Mm. I, don't, I don't mean to like be talking all about, but I'm, I'm um, happy because I've cupped this how many times, um, experimentally, trying to get it right, um, okay, cool. I'm very happy with that. Okay, let's, let's taste this guy. Hmm. Not as bright. Vietnam is the, the Vietnam that Bodhi has, it's um, called um, Lotus from the Dalat region of Vietnam. Um, it's so balanced, you know, and I can I can really push this in the um, in the uh, third part of the roast to a good like three minutes instead of two, and I feel like that's a really nice um, coffee for your average consumer who's not really used to drinking um, like Africas and things like that. They like, don't really like the the fruity bright. Um, acidic roast. So this one is like a crowd pleaser, uh, the Vietnam at this at this level. And I'd still I would still call it City Plus. Um, 
if there's a, you know, yeah, I would still call it like city plus and just entering into full city, maybe. Mm, yeah, maybe. Okay, let's take a look at this Brazil because I found that super interesting. Um, and I'm so happy that it didn't affect it. <laughs> I was so reluctant to celebrate that um, my first roast in there and um, and share it with um, with Kevin. And I was like, he's like, so did everything go? And I was like, maybe <laughs> because uh, because of that smoke that was coming through the cooling tray. I don't think it's a good thing, but I know how to work around it. And I'll, I'll let you guys know in a second after we, we finish talking about this. Recent roasts. I love that feature. I love the recent roast feature. Okay, cool. So um, Finally, we got in here, but I can't pull it up set underlays. Okay. Well, we can set the underlay Underlay meaning like um, if you wanted to do another batch with that sort of uh, uh, Roast profile underneath and then as you would roast your new one you would try to follow your curve, right? So that's underlay. Okay, let me show you they also have this new thing, fan, fuel, and drum. I didn't touch this stuff yesterday because I was so um, just trying to go through the whole motion of, of what it means to now roast like that with the new setup and everything. So um, here is my roast curve. We had a little hiccup here because I was so distracted with the smoke coming out of the cooling tray. And then uh, I was like, fuck what and then I ran I ran out here I was like yes it's venting okay I ran back over here and I was so kind of nervous about um kind of being like in an enclosed space and this this garage right here is retarded because they forgot to put vents in this garage right so I'm gonna probably have to do that at some point um so it was getting a little bit smoky in the garage and I was just like Oh my God, is it broken? Like, did we put this whole, like I was going through the whole thing. Did we put a hole in the wall for no goddamn reason? So I was kind of freaking out. So we have a little bit of a hiccup here, but I'm cupping it and it tastes really good. And we're gonna keep cupping this as it cools down. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm really surprised, I'm, bravo, bravo self. <laughs> mm. Wow, it's like transformed. I feel like I'm tasting like Peru or Honduras or something like that, but it's Brazil Ipe natural, which in my experience, I haven't been doing a very good job of it. <laughs> but I did a 375 charge on this one. Um, I went up to 2 kPa on the, after the soak, and then I just followed it through like a normal uh, natural to try to take things very slowly. It started to heat up very quickly, um, even though my machine was quote unquote cold. But in the garage, you know, in, in my experience, now that I'm roasting like that in this like corner of the garage and everything with it, not the garage door open and kind of like exposed to the elements, even on a hot day, it retains heat of the machine a lot more better, a lot, a lot more better, a lot better better <laughs> so it retains heat better than than my other setup so that was uh, that was interesting I was like cool so come winter time when it comes winter time and it does it gets pretty cold not like Minnesota cold or New York cold or anything like that but cold for us Californian folk um, and for the machine it would get rather cold but I think that's gonna be a plus in the winter um, roasting like that so I haven't roasted in the winter time like this ever. So that's gonna be a cool, fun experiment when that comes. Please, winter come. I'm so tired of the heat at this point. The total roast was what? Only 10 minutes and 53 seconds. So um, I went low and slow, but I dropped it early just cause I was like, again, distracted and worried. And I was like, is this like, a whatever roast <laughs> it's like did I waste beans again um, and this seems like the perfect time to tell you and I have no footage of it but so we tried to we tried to um, move the roaster indoors right here in uh, in the den and vent it out through the window the problem was um, we were the the termination line was way too long probably 
but still probably under 15, um, 15 feet, but it didn't work. And when the smoke came back up through the cooling tray, and that's why I was freaking out, the smoke alarms went off in the house. And I was like, hit the abort button, stop everything, stop everything, get it out of here. Um, it's not gonna work. And I was so uh, distraught and sort of like <laughs> defeated at that point. I was like, God dare, I'm just trying to make the roasting process easier because um, the beautiful thing about this, this solution that we have here that it's vented out through the wall is, you know, I'm enclosed. Um, no more interference from anything, right? It'll just be me focusing on the roast. Um, one time this kid came up. Like I was just roasting, I was doing my thing. I had my mask on and everything. And a kid came up and he was like, uh, she was like, what you doing? <laughs> I was like, ah. And then I'm so socially inept. I was like, it's hot, get out. <laughs> I was like, probably sounded very mean. Uh, I didn't mean to sound mean, but I was just like, seriously, get out. Um, I don't want any complaints, you know, but but she didn't really kind of uh, pick, up, pick up on that. She was just like, what you doing? What you cooking? I was like, ah, get out. So I'm so glad that I'm not gonna have any more interference. I get to focus. Um, it's a lot more professional setup now. Um, and yeah, so very happy. And I'm very happy with this roast. Um, if you caught the last vlog, I'm not drinking any coffee right now. Um, not that I would be, I um, normally when I cup, I'm, I'm doing the professional thing of not drinking it, but um, because I would be cupping for myself, I would just like, let me see how it tastes as I swallow it, because that is different. <laughs> Dude, I'm so happy with this Brazil. Excellent. Mmm. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm sending it to my parents anyway, so I think they're going to love it. Um, but yeah, so... <sighs> God, now I can celebrate because I was very pensive. I did not post anything. I did not say anything. I was just so focused on like, I've been hurt so bad about this. <laughs> and I was like, you better not hurt me. <laughs> it was like a girl like having so many uh, breakups and everything, so many bad relationships. Uh, I was just like, I'm not gonna say shit until it's good, good, good. Lastly, um, I'm still getting that smoke feedback, right? So when I roasted the Vietnam and I was like, you know what? It seems to be okay because I was checking out the beans and everything. Nothing was like scorched or whatever. It didn't look or smell smoky. That was kind of like my biggest uh, clue if I was gonna, you know, fuck things up <laughs> or if I had fucked things up. So with the Vietnam, I went through the whole thing. Let me show you that. Um, where? So I go over here. I'm still learning the new layout. Beep, beep, and set underlay. Okay, very nice, it's working. Ever since Bodhi shared to me their roast profiles of finishing at like 400, um, 400 degrees, and I've been just experimenting with that because after also um, watching Steve from Mill City saying a lot of people don't roast their coffee enough. They want to drop it very early and that's cool if you're doing that on purpose but if you're roasting for people who um, like like your normal consumer um, people aren't aren't roasting their coffees long enough you know and people people are getting married too much to the whole uh, two minute finish uh, two minute you know last part last phase of the roast. And I was like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> I was like, so I've been playing around with that. And since, and since Bodhi was doing that too, I was like, okay, so there's something here. There's something that I'm, I'm failing to execute at the end of the roast where I'm thinking that I'm turning, I'm cranking my, my fuel all the way down and then, you know, almost off. I never get a zero on my ROR um, at the end of the roast or anything, but you know, there's all these voices in your head from Scott Rayo to Steve to whoever you, who you're learning roasting from, right? And so you're trying to make things kind of work for you and interpret it. When you're there making the decision, you're seeing the beans and you're smelling and you're, you, you have the whole knowledge of the exact roast and the atmosphere and the type of bean you're roasting, blah, 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 right? So you in the moment are making these critical decisions and deciding what's the best decision for this situation, this particular situation, right? 
Um, so I've been playing around with that and that's why you see this little tail end here. I'm like thinking, all right, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the beans. They don't look that swelled. I'm looking for a certain uh, color and I'm looking for a certain uh, finish to the bean, right? And I think this, eventually I will buy that. Is it the um, refractometer? Actrometer, one of those fancy machines where you can see the color of the bean or whatever and you can see what's what's the doneness, right? So from the color, which is so cool, it's so interesting, from the color of the bean when it's done, is it over or underdeveloped or what's the range of when it's done? Um, I'm still a little fuzzy on that. So, but I, I, um, I have the literature on it. I just kind of <laughs> let it wash over me when I learned about it because I was like, you know what? I'm just here. I'm at this step right now. So let me just be present with this step. But I'm thinking um, that's kind of like in my for in my um, foresight, like hmm, maybe that's something that I'm going to get pretty soon because if I'm going to be finagling with these things, I, I want something more. Uh, I want a tool that's going to help me kind of identify those things of doneness. Not doneness, but like done level, level doneness. I don't know. So yeah, we finished this guy at, I was waiting for 400 degrees, but I was also going for the whole like three minute finish time. So it kind of worked out. Um, but yeah, I love roasting Vietnam. So easy, predictable, um, behaves consistently, you know, so I, I love roasting that. It makes you feel like a, a solid roaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's delicious too. Let's have a little tasty taste. <sighs> mm -hmm. mm. I miss coffee. Um, yeah. So uh, the thing, my little trick, right? So I was telling you, my little trick about finishing and I'm going through here in about six minutes to, to the last when I finish this roast, I'm getting a little smoke coming from the cooling tray. So I have a cooling tray button, fan, cooling, cooling tray fan, and then a cooling tray arms, those two green buttons on my machine. So I just hit the cooling tray fan for a couple of seconds, really, and just until visually I see that the smoke has dissipated and I'm like, boom, turn it off, right? Because the longer that I leave it, it would start blowing out the flame of my, um, my burners in the actual roaster. Um, coupled with the air of the drum. So, uh, you know, I was like, okay, I don't know all the science behind this, but it works. <laughs> so, and I'm cupping it, I'm, I'm, you know, tasting what I experimented with, and I'm very happy with it. So, yes, okay, now I can celebrate. Now I can start taking pictures. Now I can start telling people, <laughs> the, uh, or, or, you know, saying it's a success and actually being, um, being proud of it. Otherwise I was like, oh, I feel like I can't say anything yet if it doesn't work out. But yeah, so I'm very happy about that. Woohoo! Um, still experimenting with espresso roasts. As you saw yesterday, um, I didn't even dose anything. Like I wasn't, it feels like when I'm being so meticulous about things, I screw up. When I feel like I'm being natural and I'm in the zone and I'm just, you know, I know what to do and I'm letting my eyes and, and my hands kind of just do what they do with coffee and espresso, I pull a better shot. It's so weird. Um, it's like eyeballing things, right? Uh, so that was interesting. I, I want to play with that a little bit more. It kind of reminds me when you shoot archery and um, for when you learn all the things, it's so mechanical and unnatural. And you're like, oh, hit this, hit this mark, hit this mark, hit this mark, hit this mark. And you know, if you're a newbie, you'll still be off. But I feel like the more that I do it and I go through the motion and I'm relaxed and I have my eye on the target, um, I pull the arrow back and I release, like maybe because I'm in a more relaxed state, like I hit, I hit my targets more, I get tighter groupings or like that, right? So maybe espresso shot pooling and all that stuff for me is probably gonna be like that, more kind of like intuitive. And that's kind of like how I do everything. I'm not 
too meticulous. I like to go there and I'm like, oh, this is what it means to like do all the things, right? Oh, measure this. Oh, like to do this, like to have this motion here. And then later on, developing my own style or my own intuition um, in whatever skill that I'm doing. And that when I think about it and I'm talking about it, that's been that's been my way of doing things with anything um, of high skill, like photography. Yeah, tell me all the all the crazy things, uh, but really I'm going to develop my own style and how I execute and use those meticulous things and not do it by the book all the time. You know, I'm just going to do whatever feels good in the moment. Right. And I to me, that speaks to me more because now it feels more unique and more mine. Right. I like I have more ownership of it. OK, so <laughs> um, I'm very happy now. I was sort of pensive coming into here, um, but I'm very happy now with this. Um, the decaf is coming because I want some coffee. <laughs> I've been drinking uh, some some a good alternative, which is uh, I found. Um, that's giving my giving me my energy back and helping me wane off uh, and uh, dissuade all of these like uh, coffee withdrawal symptoms, um, which is high quality matcha green tea, right? So um, if and if any of you are going through the same thing, like I would highly recommend um, first heal your your stomach and everything, but as you come come off of coffee or back into coffee, um, like if you drink a lot of espressos and stuff like that. Try some high quality matcha green tea. Um, it's still gonna give you that good high quality caffeine. Um, and still be it's quite good for you. You know, green tea is good for you. Um, all right. That was fun. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.